This sermon is titled God so loved be enriched as you listen God so loved us There are many ways in which God expressed or continues to express his love towards us and the Bible points this fact that because God so loved he gave he gave in love And we know these scriptures very well. John chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 probably everyone has heard those scriptures. For God so let's read it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not die, will not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved powerful scriptures for god so loved that he gave he gave and when you think about it in natural terms for us in human terms when we give in some ways it's like deducting from our own lives you're letting go of something maybe your time maybe your money maybe your friendship you're giving something when you give something you're letting go of something it's like a subtraction but it's enriching somebody else and the fact that it is enriching somebody else is joy for you so you give even though it's you're letting go of something it's blessing somebody so you feel satisfied you're happy that that giving has enriched somebody's life and that's satisfaction in god's terms for god so loved that he gave his only begotten son that jesus christ the eternal word stepped down from glory came into the earth now we can't comprehend in our minds what that meant for god what that meant for god that he would come into our world now the lord jesus in trying to help us understand about the things of god he used stories from our world to communicate things spiritual things and one of the stories that jesus shared which many of us are very familiar with is the story of the prodigal son and that is one of those stories that communicates certain aspects of god so loved the love of god so we know that story the father had two sons and the younger one was little <laughs> out of control so he demanded his share he went away spent it all ended up in a miserable place and then he realizes what he has done and he decides to head home and what he finds out is that father his father has been waiting all along standing there waiting for him to come home and as he sees the father sees this young son return even in at a distance the father runs to him embraces him welcomes him and celebrates his return and in some ways this story communicates to us essential elements that this is how god is this is what we've done we've all wandered away from god but he stills there he's still there waiting and when we make the effort to return to god he's more than willing to embrace us welcome us and treat us like royalty put a ring around our finger and a robe around us and celebrate us and yet there are certain missing elements in this story in the story of the prodigal son so just think with me what if the father went searching for the son he went down to town saying did you see this little boy of mine the son of mine so no we haven't seen him or somebody says yeah yeah we saw somebody in that resemblance and he headed off to the other town and so the father goes on to the other town and says did you see this young man come up here and they say yeah he was here seven days ago he's now left somewhere and he can imagine the father going from town to town searching for this young son of his 
And then he finds him in such an unfortunate situation. He's out there in the dirt and the mire, filthy, feeding pigs. And that's his son. And what if the father says, hey, there's only one way I can get him back. I've got to go there. And so imagine in this story, if the father got in there where his son was and all the dirt and the mire and the filth next to the pigs, I said, son, I want you to come home. Come back. I still love you. And the son said, dad, I love to, but I can't because I owe a huge debt to my boss, the man he's working for. I have a huge debt. And I can't pay it back. And as long as I owe that debt, I'm stuck here. And what do the father said, son, I love you so much. I am going to pay this debt. And so he goes to this landlord and he says, how much does my son owe? It's paid in full. And he pays that debt completely. And he says, son, you're free. Let's go. And just imagine, he brought him to a nice hotel, <laughs> bathed him, clothed him, celebrated him. Now these missing elements are really part of God's story. In God so loved, or in God so loving, you and me. In God's love story, this is what happens. God comes after us. No matter where we have wandered, no matter where we have gone, He comes searching for us. All we like sheep have gone astray. But God comes after us. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. He came to us in our lostness. Wherever we were, He came right there. He stepped into it. And yet, it wasn't that easy. There was a huge debt that you and I owed. The debt of sin. One sin is enough to send any person into a place eternally separated from God in hell. Because God is so holy. And all of us can say, yeah, I've done more than one, many, in thought, word, and deed. I've sinned against God. I've done things displeasing to God. And all of that owes a huge debt, a spiritual debt. And here God comes and says, I'll take care of it. Because it's a debt that you can't pay. It's a debt that is impossible. Nobody else can come and clear it for you. I'll take care of it. And that's exactly what he did. So in God's love, he died for us. In his love, he died for us. And the Bible tells us, Romans 5 verse 8, God commends His love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's that old, old story. But it's wonderful to repeat. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were there in the mire and the dirt and the filth, when we had a death that we could never clear, Jesus came. He died on the cross. He shed his blood. All our sins were placed upon him. And when that debt was cleared, he said, it is finished. It's done. The work is done. So he paid our debt. And so 1 John chapter 4, 9 and 10 says, this is love. Not that we loved God, but he loved us. And he gave his son. To be a payment for our sins. So God has displayed the greatness of his love for you and me. When he died for us. When Jesus Christ died for us on the cross. That's the highest expression of God's love. He says, I, I, there's no, nothing else I can do to show you how much I love you. I love you so much that I'll take your sin upon myself in order to clear your debt. He paid for it. So what's the result? Today, the Bible tells us, He wraps us 
in his love. He wraps us in his love. The Apostle Paul unveils his revelation for us so powerfully in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4, 5, and 6. He says, you know, that, that God, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to the adoption as sons and sons and daughters. And he has made us, verse 6, he has made us accepted in the beloved. So what has he done for us? He has made us holy and without blame before him in love. So you are covered by his love. And covered by his love, you are standing before God, holy and without blame. God doesn't look at you with condemning eyes. He doesn't look at you with judgment. He looks at you to the, the fact that you are covered with his love. He sees you holy and without blame because the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has cleansed us from all sin. Amen? And verse 7 says, He has made us accepted. Verse 6, He has made us accepted in the beloved. You are accepted in the eyes of God. You're welcome in the presence of God. Religion can never do this for us. Only the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, God so loved, He paid the price, and today He covers you and me with His love, and He says, you are welcome in my presence. I don't condemn you. You are holy in my eyes. You are without blame in my eyes. You are accepted in my eyes. That's the love of God. And my prayer today is that each one of us understand this. That you don't need to earn your way into the presence of God. He's done it for you. Amen. You are holy. You are without blame. You are accepted. You are welcome. He covers you with his love. And not only does he wrap us in his love. He holds us in love. I want us to understand that. So, this is Christmas season. There's a lot of festivities and celebration happening. And yet, in this season, some of us could be going through perhaps the most challenging times in our lives. There could be pain. There could be sickness. There could be financial difficulties, there could be problems in the marriage, in the home, uh, so many things and with, with all the celebration around and yet there are some who are going through these struggles. Maybe you're sitting, sitting here this morning, there is celebration of Christmas and yet in your own life there is pain, there is hurt, there is different struggles. How do you reconcile the two? Well, the Apostle Paul penned these words in Romans chapter 8. Verses 35, 36, 37, he says, you know, what can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ? What can separate us? Can tribulation, can trial and famine and nakedness and peril and so on? He says, in fact, all day long we are accounted as sheep for slaughter. So that means even if I'm in a situation like this, where I'm like sheep led to be slaughtered, he says in verse 37, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. The recognition of God's love. The recognition that nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us. No matter what life throws at you. No matter how challenging the circumstance. No matter how dark the tunnel. No matter how high the mountain. No matter how lonely the place. There is this love of God which has not let you go. Amen. So he says, what can separate us from the love that God has? No matter what I go through, I can know deep in my heart, God still loves me. God still loves me. Circumstances might be telling you, contrary, God for has forgotten you. God doesn't care about you. Where is your God? Why are you like this? Why is this happening to you? I'm so lonely. 
whatever. Oh, that's what circumstances may be screaming at you. But deep in your heart, the Apostle Paul says, we know nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us. And because we know that, he says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. So you're not just hoping to come through. You know the game's over. God's won and you've won because you're on his side. God's going to bring you through. You know it. So the love of God holds us in the middle of all of these things that we go through. That's why even though in the midst of festivities you're going through difficult times you can rest assured my God still loves me he still loves me and his love makes me more than a conqueror amen and so the apostle Paul invites us to this place of knowing his love knowing his love that's very important he prays for the believers, and this is in Ephesians 3. He says, I pray that you may know the length and the breadth and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. Meaning, this is a love that I want you to understand even though it's beyond understanding. I want you to comprehend even though it's beyond comprehension. It's a love that is deeper than love itself. It's a love that you know it experientially even though you cannot articulate it with human words and terms you cannot fully convey it to somebody else how do you know God loves you what does it mean to you to be loved and accepted by God you may not be able to put it in words you may not be able to capture it in a song but you know it in your heart that this love of God that he has for you is immeasurable it is unexplainable it is it's a love that will, never, that will never be broken. It's unrestrainable. It's unquestionable. That's the kind of love that God has for you. Amen. And he says, I want you to know it. When you know it, God loves me. I can't explain it. But that satisfies. Amen. It satisfies. It's a place where I can rest. It's a place where you feel complete. Now, I usually say this in, or I've said this in a marriage. Your spouse can compliment you, but only God can complete, only God can complete you. Don't look to your spouse to be complete. Amen? You look to God to complete you. Your spouse compliments you. Amen? Because some of, some of you say, my marriage isn't the way I expected it to be. This and that. And, and I was working through this past week. Yeah. Some families are going through sickness. Some are going through these marriage problems. And I'm saying, God, this is Christmas week. And this is what they're going through. And I hear the wife say, I'm feeling so lonely and this and that. But we need to understand. It's only the love of God that can complete us. Amen. It's the love of God. In that love, you find your completeness. You find your satisfaction. And so you and I need to come into that place of the love of God. So Paul says, I want you to know this love. I want you to know this love. How deep, how wide, how great it is. And when you know this love, it leads us to this next thing. We can reciprocate that love. We love him. John wrote this so simply. 1 John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. Very simple. Why do you love God? Because he first loved me. And I've tasted and I've seen that he is good. I've experienced that love. 
And when you experience the love that God has for you, you can't help but love Him back. Say, God, I love you. Amen? We love Him because He first loved us. Worship to Him, please come. You know, many, many, many years ago, as a teenager, when I used to go to the schools to preach, uh, you know, we didn't have worship teams and all that. I just go and now I, I couldn't sing much. So I hit up on this little trick. <laughs> there was this old chorus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Two lines. <laughs> Very simple. So I taught the kids that. And all I would do is just start the song and they'd all sing. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. That's how we used to begin those meetings those days. Just sing that two lines. But it affirms why we love Jesus. Because he first loved so we obey Him because He first loved us and we love Him back. We serve Him because He first loved us, we love Him back. We worship Him because He first loved us, we love Him back. That's why we worship Him. Everything we do is in response to His love for us. Amen. And finally, for God so loved and when we experience that love, it makes us want to love other people. Amen? I know sometimes people are harsh and they're rude and they say all kinds of things and do all kinds of things. But then when we know the love of God and we've been recipients of that love, we can't help but think of loving other people. If God so loved us, then I owe others that same kind of love. Apostle Paul says, Owe no man anything but love. Love. John writes, he says in 1 John chapter, four, uh, chapter 3 verse 16, he says, By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. We also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So when we know love, have experienced the love of God, then we begin to think like this. He laid down his life for me, so I'm going to lay down my life for others. So experiencing God's love so changes us that we are willing to lay down our life for others. That's what the love of God will lead us to do. Paul writes in Ephesians 5, he says, Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God. Walk in love as Christ loved us. Christ loved me, so I'm going to love other people. I'm going to extend that love. He forgave me so I can forgive others. He loves me so I can love others. So that's what we do. God so loved. He has cleared my debt. He's brought me into this place where I stand loved and accepted in His presence. He's brought me into this place where I know that nothing can separate me from that love. And I'm in that place where I know I'm loved by God. And I love Him back. And I extend that same love to those around me. Amen. What does God's love for you mean to you this morning? Have you experienced the love of God? Are you in that place where you know that you're so loved by God? Are you in that place where you know that because God loves you, He's never 
going to abandon you. He's not going to give up on you. Are you in that place where you're able to reciprocate that love back to God? Lord, I love you because I understand how much you love me. Are you in that place where you're able to love people because you've experienced his love in such a way? Why don't you just take a few moments to think about this, just ponder on it. For those of us who may be new, maybe you've come here, or you're visiting, or you've, a friend invited you this morning. This is the message of the Bible. God so loved you that he sent Jesus. So that if you believe in him, you will not die, but you will have eternal life. It sounds so simple, but it's this one verse that describes your eternal future. If you believe in him, you will not die, but you will have eternal life. And so if you've never made a decision to believe in Jesus Christ, if you've never made a decision to receive Christ into your life and say yes to his love and what he did for you out of love, then this morning you have the opportunity to do that. I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. And if you've never received Jesus into your life, you've never said, Lord, forgive me my sins, come into my life, I want to invite you to do that right now as we pray. I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. Let's bow our heads, please. There's anyone here in this auditorium, maybe you're watching online as well. You've never received Jesus into your life. The Bible says, as many as have received him, to them he gives the power to become the children of God. That when you receive Jesus, receive his love, he makes you a child of God. If you're not sure this morning that you are a child of God, that you have received Jesus into your life, if you're not sure, but you feel you want to do that, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. Just say this with me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross. I believe you paid my debts. I believe you rose up again. You're alive today. I ask you to come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God and help me to follow you and you alone the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is anyone here, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. We want to celebrate with you. I just want to see your hand. You prayed this prayer with me in this auditorium. You said, one, God bless you. Anybody else? Wonderful, wonderful. Anybody else? You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. Anyone else? I want to see your hands. You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. Just wave your hands. We don't want to miss out anybody. I see another hand at the back there. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? You want to see? Anyone else? I see a third hand here. God bless you. Anyone else? Just wave your hand. You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. God bless you. All right, wonderful. So our greeters will come. They give you a bag. It's called a new believer's bag. Along that, there's a decision card. If you just write your name and number, please, and hand the card back to the greeter who came to you. Somebody from the church office will call you. I will guide you through how to use the resources that are in the bag. And uh, it'll be our privilege to help you in your spiritual journey. Those of you watching online, you can go to our church website. Just go to the same URL, apcw.org slash ftv. Just put your name details there and it'll help us reach, reach out to you. Or just email contact at apcw.org and we will help you through email, guide you through this decision. Take time to think about God's love, for God so loved. And may the love of God encourage you and me this Christmas season. We're going to sing, as I mentioned, another old hymn. To God be the glory. Could we all rise to our feet, please? The worship team will lead us. And we want to say, God, thank you. Thank you. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So love the world. 
altar he gave us his son who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life case all may go in praise the lord come on praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory great things he has done Redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes the moment from Jesus the pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Great things He had taught us, great things He had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But and greater will be our wonder, our victory when Jesus we see. auditorium those watching online that truly God our hearts will understand how much you love us that today right where we are each one of us in whatever circumstance whatever situation we are unquestionably loved by God there is no question you love us and we can have the assurance that nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us in Jesus Christ. And we have the assurance and we have the joy in our hearts that in all these things we are more than conquerors. 
through him who loved us. We are coming out on the wedding side. We are on the wedding side. We are winners. We are more than conquerors. And so, Father, we praise you. We honor you. We thank you. We pray the grace of your Holy Spirit, the empowering of your, of your Spirit on each of our lives as we journey forward. Thank you that you carry us, you strengthen us, you empower us, and you lead us, Lord. We stand before you knowing that we are holy and without blame, that we are accepted in the Beloved, in Christ. Thank you for this blessed assurance thank you Lord we praise you we honor you may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God our Heavenly Father and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit fill every heart, every life, always. In Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.